I sure am nuts for donuts. And I'm donuts for nuts. Like nuts. This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is, is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaity. And Nicole, today we are taking on the most important subject matter we have ever covered here. Because what really? is the number one problem in America? I think there's a lot of division within the nation right now. I think it's causing a lot of stress and difficult times ahead because the unity is just gone. No, that's stupid. It's when you walk into a donut shop, you don't know which one is the best. <laughs> and what is the solution to all of America's problems? Podcasts. Oh. So we're going to tell you. <laughs> I was going to say my TikTok clips of podcasts. So. I will say correlation is not causation, but if you were to graph. I learned that in law school. I didn't go to law school <laughs> <laughs> David learned that in law school, and I learned you by, by that, osmosis. You can't say that you learned it in law school if your husband, who is going to law school, just told you it. That's like saying I went to Harvard because like someone at a bar yelled at me, and they went to. Is Harvard. anyone going to fact check you about it? No, I, I, correlation is not causation. Yeah, but law school. The number of <laughs> problems in the nation and the number of podcasts seem to have a positive going correlation. Up. Going up. They just keep going up. Keep going up. Um, but we're here, just two podcasters, arguing about what the best donut is. I'm not a podcaster, and neither are you. We really aren't, though. We're people we, who we, we have so much other things other than... We contain multitudes. Podcaster is a slur. I don't think so. Podca oh, my God. It is. I, uh, absolutely. Well, when you meet someone and they're like, I have a podcast, I spit do you at hate them. them? <laughs> I spit at them like a llama, like an Ibex, like a tit. <laughs> get out of here, podcaster. I love an no, mine's actually. Really <laughs> get out of here. Mine gets like I do ads. <laughs> I'm sponsored. Donuts, donuts. What are your thoughts on donuts? Um, you said you go you go nuts for them. I actually so. <laughs> don't really like donuts. I thought that you lied right to the people's faces in the first. Minute I'm a of the liar. Podcast. That girl's a liar. <laughs> Sorry, I guess we're just in a silly, goofy mood. Everything why America's so, getting worse. Everything's why are we getting so worse. Silly and today? I think uh, you would, the the data would verify that. Why are music you... is getting worse? That was the number one song for a long it's time. It's a good song. Have you ever danced to it like how I danced to it? <laughs> <laughs> if you just move your body the way I do, it's a pretty good song. I've never done that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but donuts. I like don't. I don't like search out a donut often. When it comes to like the canon of desserts, cheesecake. <laughs> Sign me up. I'm taking a big old spoonful of a cheesecake. But when it comes to donuts, like Krispy Kreme donuts has never like enchanted me. Mm. Or like um things like that. The one I'm gonna save this for later and tell you what my favorite one is. I'm not gonna tell you right now, but I do like a, a filled, a filled ethnic donut. Is you say a filled ethnic donut? Is what is my an favorite. ethnic donut to you? <laughs> As an ethnic American woman, what is that? I like pun cheek. Oh, interesting. So, are the poles? No, Ponchik is Armenian. Armenian, Armenian, Armenian. Yeah. Okay. So, it's just, it's the most beautiful, like, yeasty, yummy donut. And they fill it with this eggy, stunning custard. Mm. And it's warm on the outside. Well, when, when we get it. So, my dad really loves them, actually. It's my dad's favorite, aside from Napoleon's, cream filled Napoleon's. Mm. But, like, we, he loves custard filled Ponchiks. And, we like to microwave it a little bit to get the chill off of it. And it's like the cream is cold and the ponchik is hot. And it still has that like matted um, uh, powdered sugar on it. And it's one of the most delicious foods. My mouth is watering. Uh, like ever. I don't like donuts. I don't like American donuts. Interesting. But geez louise, a custard ponchik from Papillon Bakery. Papillon Bakery does is incredible. Work. Incredible. Every I know what you mean by ethnic donuts. Now. Yeah. Every time I <laughs> every time I go to like a uh, like if I'm like having a Shabbat or like my sister's hosting like a party, I always bring Papillon because it's a crowd pleaser. And my dad really likes them and I love my dad. <laughs> I love you. I love your dad too. More Thanks. shout out. Um I guess we should like define our terms here when we're talking about donuts because a lot of Fried people for, for, <laughs> true. But a lot of people like for our American listeners, you know, we grew up going to donut shops and you probably saw the same canon of donuts in most of those. I didn't do that because my mom... You're in Los Angeles. We're like one of I the... I know, but my mom was like very anti, like she was very diet culture-y. So like we wouldn't do that. One time mm. I got a McFlurry and my mom threw it out the window. Uh, what other childhood traumas do you want to talk about? I always, I dump one. on you. Uh -huh. it's, I dump my childhood traumas on you. So if you want to talk about... I don't have as much as you 
<laughs> but that was the one. My mom was very diet culture like sugar is bad, fat is bad, like bad, 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 bad. So but you, but you, so you never, do you remember the first time you went into like a donut shop? Or I do have you have no, any salient memories of going to a donut shop? I have shop? no memories of going to a donut shop. It wasn't like a, a place marked. Yeah, it wasn't like marked as sacred for you as an experience. Not even a little bit. But what we would do is we would go to like, like Middle Eastern bakeries and it, that was it for me with like the little petty fours and like little cakes and like with like mm. little fruit tarts. So that was more of my exposure to like going to a dessert shop and seeing all the beautiful little. Did your mom make you get the fruit tarts that had fresh fruit in it? And she said that was healthier. Not all. I mean, we were more. Uh, what's the almond paste? Frangipan. We were oh. more pear tart with frangipan people. I'm um, sorry, Nicole grew up in Beverly Hills. She did not grow up with donuts. She had pear tart with frangipan. <laughs> <laughs> so if you all could just get that through your heads. I'm just sorry. like you. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I know. I might take out there is, in Lexington, Kentucky. My take is very unique, but I think <laughs> that's why what makes me so special is because I'm so unique and nobody else is like me, right, Joe? I agree with that. Yeah. I t- <laughs> talking sorry, about childhood trauma. Talking yeah. about childhood trauma. My earliest donut shop memory is when my dad lived in Oceanside and my mom lived in Orange County. You can Google Map it to find out how far. Okay. The midpoint was in San Clemente, California. And my parents, when it was time to hand over partial custody, we'd meet outside of a donut shop next to the Denny's in San Clemente, the one that's off the freeway, the 405. You know what I'm talking about. You know the one. You know the one. Old faded sign just past San Onofre, the power plant that looks like boobies. And then you drive past. Oh, yeah, the boobies. boobies, The boobies. The big boobies. You got blinking little lights on top. And anyways, we would do the handoff with the kids Mm -hmm. at a donut shop. And I would always walk in and I'd get a donut. And my parents would argue about who had to pay. You didn't pay child support. So you get the donuts, you know, that whole thing. Um, So what I'm saying is I associate donuts (laughs) with comfort. And I would always get a different donut because I want to try it. There was one that really stuck out to me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I would consider it a proper donut. Maple bar. <laughs> no, that's definitely a donut. So oh. when we talk about donuts, we've talked about this before. There are mostly two kinds. Donut generally refers to just a fried leavened dough. Sure. And even when you, um, God, is it pronounced yu The The Chinese, yeah. The Chinese, they will just call them donuts. They put it in konji. They'll put it in konji. They will also serve it with fresh soy milk, which is a really delight. Yum. Yes, yes, yes. Um, right. And so people even call that thing a donut, which obviously has nothing to do with the American, you know, donut. Uh, donut shop culture, sure. um, but any sort of fried dough here. Yeah. Um, there's cake donuts, which are a batter that's have baked we, and then fried, and we did we figure this out. So it's baked. They're and baked then... in a mold and then they're fried. So we were both right. We're both right. They're both a cake and the donut. But anyway, who says we can't get along? <laughs> <laughs> so the donut that I always gravitated to mm-hmm. when I was a kid because I thought it was like fancy and cool, and I still, <laughs> but we'll get it. You got get it. Get it. Okay. Cool. The donut that I always gravitated towards when I was a kid because I thought it was fancy and cool and very epicurean. Okay. Apple fritters, dude. Ooh. Ooh. Dude, a dense. And I'm not talking about like, so bear claws, some people will call what an is apple a bear fritter. Claw? Some people will call an apple fritter a bear claw. Apple fritters, Ooh. I'm talking about, they are dark, they are dense, they are gnarled and knurled. Yeah. Filled with actual apple chunks that probably yeah. came from a can. And they're deep fried and they're heavily caramelized, super sugary. They're twice as dense as any other donut. Is a bear claw with almonds? I believe a bear claw is a donut that is leavened dough that has uh, marks in it like a catcher's mitt almost. And then it is most often filled with apple. Oh, really? So okay. see, it looks like a catcher's mitt. We're oh, looking nice, at nice, a, nice, a, nice. a Google image right now. Almond paste. See, fr- frangipan. Almond paste. Oh, interesting. But... Ooh, fancy Nicole with her pails and frangipan. <laughs> That's just a bear claw, bro. Bear claws aren't. <laughs> the, the Google says it's often filled with almond paste. The donut shots I was usually going to, it doesn't say often it says usually, says usually filled. I don't know about usually, usually filled. I, you, you measure usually the filled. amount the total amount of bear clawage in the United States. No, usually there's not going to be above fifty percent are filled with almond paste. God, they cost a dollar seventy nine. Okay, so do you know how high of a concentration of Germans live in the U.S.? A lot, a lot of them, especially in the fifties. Do Germans love almond paste? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Almond paste is a very like European thing. It's yeah, not European. I, I, would, I would. Germany's consider, in Europe. I guess Austria like invented a lot of the modern patissier. Yeah. Why are you being so, so weird with it? So yeah, that's interesting. Croissants. <laughs> croissants were invented in Austria. Austria. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why yeah. they call it viennoiserie. The general canon of laminated pastries in it's France. It's easy. Just say Nicole. You were right. Nicole, you were right. Okay. Everyone <laughs> grew up eating French and pan almond tarts. You're so normal. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> <What are> you? <laughs> 
<laughs> but as uh-huh. I've gotten older, mm-hmm. and given your answer of the ponchik from Papillon uh, Bakery, mm-hmm. I think you and I have the same King Donut in mind. Are you going to say Sufganyot? No, no, no. that's it's, not my favorite. It's, it's one of the donuts that comes from a common Boston American. Cream the pie. Boston cream Boston pie cream donut. Pie. Far and away the greatest donut of all time. I haven't had one in a really long time, so I actually don't remember what they taste like completely. Dude. I'm sorry. I'm so mad that we don't have these in front of us right now. I'm oh my god, happy da- about da- it. like uh the dad's donuts, which uh, in Burbank, California, they do a great Boston cream pie donut. That's a bummer, but it's perfect. And it has to be custard, not cream. I see. I firmly believe I just got back from New Orleans. Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody that listens to this podcast knows that. I bought an ankle bracelet. Everybody knows that too. I took a bunch of jello shots. Yeah, you talked about it in the last one. Another podcast. thing I did is I ate a bunch of fried dough because beignets are oh, very love common. Beignets, yeah. I went to Cafe Beignet, I went to Loretta's, I went to Cafe, Cafe Dumond, Dumond, which was Cafe Dumond. I just waited in line at like 45 minutes, at like seven in the morning, drinking <laughs> the coffee. Julia was still asleep because I'm an early riser. I was like, let's walk a mile to and it was just it was bad, like straight up. It's it a tourist. Was. It's I a really tourist thing. Um, I was glad that I went, you know, mm-hmm. but literally nothing about it was good. Also, just a funny fact about uh, Cafe Du Monde. There's like a series of benches, maybe a couple hundred yards away, that overlook the water. Mm-hmm. A lot of people take their beignets in a bag and they go eat the benches. There's a man who was paid to come wash away all the powdered sugar that drops underneath the benches, and nice. I saw him do that. And then somebody was like. Why are you doing that? And he's like, the birds will eat the powdered sugar and die. Um, so that's a funny little local God bless. Story. God bless. Point is, I had a bunch of fried dough and beignets. A lot of people are like, they're the lightest, they're the best, they're whatever. It's uh, Most fried dough is damn near the same. And it's always good. And it's always good. Yeah. But then you start really figuring out what the best is. And I have decided that there's one best iteration of fried dough that has ever existed in the world. More than Boston cream pie? Well, so, 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 so. Mm-hmm. It's a Krispy Kreme original glazed donut. Yeah, okay. I don't think from a culinary culinary perspective, straight up, you look at the dough structure, yeah, the it's crumb, perfect. you look at everything, yeah. and I'm not just doing this to be like an everyman. No, I, I've become like a real bougie piece of crap. I just ate a Cheeto in the kitchen yeah. and just went, ugh, <laughs> tastes so artificial. So I'm at that point in my life now. Um, Krispy Kreme, I still love hot Cheetos. Krispy Kreme donuts, I mm-hmm. think they figured it out. It's yeah. the lightest. It's consistent and it's delicious. The and, glaze yeah. dries to the perfect, perfect level yeah. of hardness. It's perfect, yeah. The rest of their donuts are not good. You put um, anything else on it and it kind of... Do you like old-fashioned donuts? Because that's my second Ooh. favorite. Wait, wait. Can we go back to Krispy yeah, Kreme yeah, real sorry, quick? Sorry, sorry. Go back to Krispy Kreme? Of course. No, no. I, I do want to talk about that. Um, Krispy Kreme, if you, get a, a, if you get a Boston cream pie donut from Krispy Kreme... It's filled with a cream filling, not custard. Which you don't like. Which I don't like. But even if they filled that with custard, I think it wouldn't be as good because the dough wouldn't have the same integrity. Sure. You put a chocolate frosting on it, that's like fine enough. It's still good uh, from there. But anything else that requires a heavier coating than the glaze, you're putting strawberry toppings on it, all that. Krispy Kreme is never as good. But the original glazed donut is is really good. The single best iteration of fried dough. Nothing is lighter. Nothing has a more perfect texture on that first it bite. It is really special. I don't even want it fresh out of the fryer. I want to sit it, sitting. I want it sitting out to yeah. let it like air dry that glaze a little bit more. Yeah. Oh my God, they roll. It's really good. Um, <clears throat> I do like it, but my favorite, like if I were supposed, if I were to go to a donut shop, like a regular, like a LA pink box place, mm. I find myself gravitating towards the old fashioned ones. But yeah. I don't know why. I think it's because they look a little craggy and silly and they're, they're not fu- perfect. They're fun. So maybe that's why I picked them. Describe an old-fashioned donut to people who don't know. Is it sour cream or buttermilk? Uh, It can be either. Okay, so Um, it's just a donut made with sour cream and buttermilk. My favorite in L.A. is is a buttermilk old-fashioned. From Sidecar? No, it's a spot called Primo's. Old school, 50 years old spot. Yeah, I just just love the the crumb of of an old-fashioned donut is so luxurious and unctuous and delicious. Is an old-fashioned donut yeasted or not? I don't know. I don't think it is, dude. Hold on. Is an old-fashioned donut technically a cake donut? So so an old-fashioned donut, if you've ever seen the donuts that, it's not a curler. We'll get into that because I'm fascinated by certain things in the donut industry. But an old-fashioned donut, it typically has these sort of ridges around the end. It's stamped into a circle but then you see this uh, almost like creste de gallo. Yeah. It's like a rooster's co- a coxcomb okay, on the donut, sure. right? 
And so it gets these craggly edges. They'll typically put like sometimes there's a sour cream glaze on it or whatever. Um, but they'll put a mm. sugar glaze on it, and then it almost gets into the crags, and the crags become extra crispy. Hold on. 19th century recipes for old-fashioned donuts are made with yeast, but modern donut shops, an old-fashioned donut is usually a cake donut. It's beautiful. And a glazed old-fashioned is yes. really good. But I don't like chocolate old-fashioned. Me neither. I What chocolate donuts? Oh, I have one. Do you like? Like, you like a chocolate cake donut? Um, Very rarely do I like it, but I used to work at this chocolate shop, and we used to do a— chocolate stout oh that's fun and it was oh that's fun and it was a cake donut and then we would put um a really beautiful like vanilla chocolate glaze like a like an icing and then cacao nibs on top Mm. and that was pretty (laughs) fucking good oh sorry if it said that for (laughs) and that was pretty good (laughs) but yeah no not really i i'm starting to realize i might have like a holy triumvirate of donuts here what is a triumvirate a triumvirate uh make a google triumvirate it's like a ruling party of three right? you could just That's say trio i feel like you could have just yeah, said but like this is trio. the beauty of language triumvirate in ancient rome a group of three men holding power like i, I don't understand why this difficult. like the father son and the holy spirit yeah the office of triumvirate so anyways my holy triumvirate of you know why i like it's because it's hyperbolic is that a word do you have like a calendar where it says word of the day is blank and no you if have... you want to get me one though that'd be pretty cool okay Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, quite resplendent. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying? Sorry uh, to interrupt you. I think it's a triumvirate for me because I was very convinced that the Boston cream donut with the custard filling is my perfect one. And I still do love that, especially when the custard's like cold. You know what I mean? Sure. But the crispy cool cream, that light, that perfect, that quintessence of what a donut should be. Sure. But then also that really dense, buttermilky, old-fashioned, there's nothing that wow. hits like that. Wow, it's Especially so good. Especially with coffee. Wow, it's so good. Like the dense pastry hot stays coffee. in your mouth. Yeah, hot black hot coffee with it. black mm, coffee. Mm, mm, mm. It's like, so ooh, good. did someone put a half teaspoon of salt in this? Why does it taste like that? That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what Me you too. get at Primo's, baby. Me too. You know, when I was growing up, I always thought donuts had to be like that big pink Homer Simpson-y donut. Yeah, yeah. And then I had one and I said, meh. Yeah, that yeah, that's uh, the, the the pink donuts are a trap. Yes, um, cake, cake, iced cake donuts. Let's just run through some donuts right here. Okay, because you got like your iced cake donuts, which to me are always just fine. It's never what I want. Yeah. Uh, then you got the iced yeasted raised donuts, also never really what I want. Chocolate icing, perfectly fine. Chocolate sugar. icing on a glaze is good. What about powdered sugar donuts? Out. What about sugar donuts? Have you ever sugar had sugar a- donuts? Mm, kind of out. Sometimes. I don't know why. I feel like a little French girl. <laughs> oh, the sugar's on my little hands, mommy. <laughs> I feel like a little. Oh, the like, sugar on my little, little, little hands. Mama, mama, oh, mama, the sugar, sugar is in my hands. Oh, mama, stop blowing mama, that cigarette so... smoke in my face. Mama, I do not want one with my dinner. Please. Oh, mama, there's a little rat under my hat oh, no. and he's telling me to burn things. <laughs> um, you know how the French are. But anyways, no, I hate sugar donuts. Yeah. Even I was thinking about churros, which. People could consider a churro oh, a donut reasonably. I love churros. Well, hold on. We got to get to that. Well, wait, give me a sec. We got a little Speaking bit of Speaking of ethnic donuts, <laughs> <laughs> I love churros. You know, Costco, would, dis- hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, go. <laughs> Costco go. is discontinuing their churros. Did okay, you know now I go. So <laughs> <laughs> I just made a bombshell statement. You don't even care. Are Costco churros even churros? What are you talking so about? So most of the churros that I think if you go to like an amusement park, right? They're like three foot long, hard sticks covered in in sandpaper sugar. If you have like an actual Spanish or even an actual like Mexican churro that's mm-hmm. been like cooked for you, yeah. they're so worlds apart from the well, freezer yeah. aisle. Like this like the Spanish circular ones where you dip in hot chocolate, those are different. Yeah, I mean even like okay. Mexican churro, you know, same uh style and it's like a very intricate light dough and then pat the shoe. It's pata shoe, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's shoe pastry. Um, but then you go to Disneyland or Costco or whatever, and they're churros, like a baseball game. It's like there's a dill pickle filled in it. It's just <laughs> it, they're hard. They're great. It's like it's like a, a salt lick is to a, a deer, need... as me is to this churro. I'm just gnashing at it with my teeth throughout nine innings. I have one question. One yeah. more, one more churro question. Why go are you ahead. so tired? Because oh, I was I feel like I was talking about something and I lost my I'm place. I'm so sorry. No, I'll go ahead. It'll come back I'll to come you. Back. What was that one place? It's like a fast food restaurant that had churros that were stuffed with stuff. Was it Jack in the Box? Was it? Was it stuffed with dulce de leche? I think it was Jack in the Box. That that is my... Do they still have it? I don't know. Can Um, I just say that is my favorite fast food dessert of all time. And if you ever want to make it on fast food, I would freaking love that. I feel like Jack in the Box used to have stuffed churros. 
I don't know. Anyone? Someone write in the comments. Continue. I'm so sorry. Krillers. I don't care for them. What is a kriller to you? It's like an old fashioned, but it's a little bit more tame. Like What's the, the dough on a type? kriller? I don't know. Well, well, no, this is this is why I asked because we're talking about like the actual cookery of certain donuts, and I'm fascinated by what American donut shops have done to these names. They kind of did a little bit like what Starbucks and Chipotle did. Where Starbucks is like, this is a macchiato. And you're like, how is that different from a latte? And they're like, it is not. And then you find out like a real macchiato is a real thing. Yeah. Or at Chipotle when they call it like carnitas. Oh, mm-hmm. And it's just kind of wet pork. And then you find out the carnitas is an actual thing. That's how I found out what an eclair was and what a cruller was. So do you, when you think of curlers, do you think of a circle or do you think of a long pastry? I think of a circle, but that's been piped through a star tip to give it ridges. So to me, a curler oh. is ridged. So this, so a French curler is this. Uh. So a curler is made with pâte à choux as well, like a proper French curler. Is it? It's a choux dough. Are you? And a choux dough is what you pulling like. Pulling my chain? Uh, no, a, a choux dough, you're, you're cooking milk with flour and butter, mm-hmm. and then you add egg to it when it's cooled? Yes, yes. That's what I'm thinking. That's yeah. pâte à choux. And then you have to pipe it while it's still warm, but pliable. Mm-hmm. It's like a really intricate dough to do. I remember I tried making it for home at class when I was 12 and I royally you screwed it up. You had home at class? Yeah, so yeah. all the dudes were taking wood shot from a basketball team and I was like, Bruh, I'm going to make lasagna in home ec. And I did. I'm like, I'm going to meet girls. And I was like, oh, I'm too scared to talk to them. Anywho, um, I'm sorry. I just totally disassociated. What did you do? Did you talk to a girl? Is that no, what you're saying? No, I was scared of them. Of 12. girls? Yeah. I you no were scared of girls me. when you were 12? I thought I was undeserving of love because I was messaging my whole life. Oh. You know? But you're okay now. You're 31. Yeah, and I have no problems. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so <laughs> let's think about donuts again. What so you it? go to an American donut shop and you can find any Claire. Which is made with shudo. I like it. You can find a cruller that is made with shudo, except they're just made with normal ass donut dough. Mm -hmm. So an American donut shop eclair is a long john donut, which is just a a bar. And then it is it is filled with custard and iced with chocolate. So the same thing as a Boston cream donut. They were calling an eclair, at least in the shops that I would go to when Mm -hmm. I was a kid. Okay. That might be the only one that can compete with the Boston cream because Easier to eat. Phallic. Long foods yeah. that fit in your mouth. It is phallic. Are better. Better? I think so. Hmm. I'm a fan. I don't want to unpack that. <laughs> you know, Stop. that was a donut. They're going right in. Okay. And curl- curlers are the same thing. They would just be made with braided donut dough, which is what you found when you Googled. I like I like curlers, but I don't love them the way that I love an old fashioned. Let's talk about fancy donuts. Oh, I was just about to a lot talk of about new school donuts. donuts. Oh my gosh. A lot of new school donuts doing cool things. Blue Star Donuts had this beautiful donut. It was a passion fruit glazed yeasted donut with cayenne pepper. Honey. Was it really oh good? It was good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, I think passion fruit is one of my top three favorite fruits. And very relatable young woman. <laughs> and uh, I, like, whenever I would, like, I bake. Mm. I used to bake a lot more than I do now. But um, I used to make, instead of lemon curd, I would make passion fruit curd. That's a good curd. So I would always, like, gift people jars of passion fruit curd. I would make passion fruit tarts. Or you passion use fresh fruit. passion fruits for it? I, no, I would have to. Well, sometimes I would, but I would prefer to use um, a passion fruit puree yep. from Surface from a French company. 16 uh. ounces cost me about 50 bucks, so I had to Damn. stop. So I had to stop. <laughs> you had to stop. I had to stop. You know when you have to stop your passion fruit addiction because it's been costing you too much money? Too much money. Um, but passion fruit, especially like curdy, icingy, like yeah. these beautiful like uh, expressions of passion mm. fruit with a little bit of cayenne pepper, just sitting on a pillowy, gorgeous, fresh donut was one of my favorite culinary experiences. I actually went in front of the show Mitchell Frieder and hey. I with two other students went to Blue Star Donuts together because he wanted to open like a little donut shop with us. I don't know Mm. if I signed an NDA, sorry. And um, we just sat there and we tasted like 15 donuts together. That's a fun time. It was a fun time. I feel like to me, I remember the fancy donut boom. Blue Star from Portland was a big one. Sidecar Donuts from from Orange County was a big one. Did you ever have the egg one, the Eggs Benedict one? They have a, I love it. It is a savory donut and fried dough is a great savory application, but it is a savory Unsweetened fried dough filled with 
a poached egg. So crazy. Some sort of ham product. It's probably prosciutto. Mm -hmm. And then a basil hollandaise. Wow. And I remember eating that donut. And that is a special donut. It's outside of the canon of normal donuts. But I ate it. And basil hollandaise just went right into the, my crotch when I was driving wow. in Santa Monica, California. Um, but they had a bunch of really cool inventive donuts. I am all for a creme brulee donut. It's a great idea. You fill a donut with custard. Oh. You torch the sugar so it's glassy. That's fun. That is that a is lemon meringue donut. You fill it with lemon curd. Like oh. wait, little ways to improve the old canon of donuts because you could always get like the kind of like gross, just goopy lemon filled donuts that are like fine. But you make like a proper lemon curd. You put a little bit of meringue on top and torch it. Like that's an awesome donut. Wow. You know, but I feel like ninety nine percent of the time these fancy donuts are. Bad. They had a margarita donut at Trejo's Donuts. But let me tell you, Bad. a creme brulee donut is pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. For new school donuts, that's mm -hmm. probably my top one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw out throw out an international donut real quick. Throw it. Shout out to Cook Sisters from South Africa. <laughs> it's a, uh, there's two kinds of Cook Sisters. So Cook Sisters is, uh, we didn't go into the origin of donuts. I think people are sick of the food history for me. But I believe it's a Dutch invention that originally called uh, oil cook. I've never heard and of it. And cook is how we got the word cake, I believe. It's K-O-E-K. -E okay. You know, um, but anyways, I went to South Africa and they have things called Cook Sisters. And they're, you know, Cake Sisters and the, the like white Dutch Cook Sister is a normal ass kind of fried dough donut covered in sugar. And there's like two pieces and you pull them. Or they're intertwined or something. But Kate Malay Cook Sisters. So Kate Malay are people that generally descended from India. I believe it's actually Malay, mm -hmm. maybe is the region. Uh, don't take my word for it. But um, they've been in South Africa for hundreds of years and very much developed their own food ways. A lot of it rooted in a lot of different Indian cookery. Um, but they have their own version of Cook Sisters that are these like dark, spiced, molasses-y fried dough balls mm -hmm. that are, like, almost swimming in a syrup similar yeah. to, like, gulab, gulab jamun, jamun. Mm -hmm. which, if we're talking those donut, if that's those a donut, that's the best Those donut. are the best Bam. donuts. Gulab jamun. Mm. But it was really cool to see the sort of Cape Malay, somewhat Indianified version of the Cook Sisters donuts that had all of those incredible warm spices that we might associate with masala chai or something. Wow. That was a great donut experience. Well, California donuts, ube donuts, pan panda donuts, matcha donuts. A lot of mochi donuts. Mochi nuts. I mochi like mochi nuts. nuts. I love a mochi donut. Fried mochi. You got a little nice chew to it. Yeah. That's good. The cronut. I don't. It, I love a cronut. Uh, I, I don't work. love a cronut. I love the construction of it and the and the ideation that went behind it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're hit or miss for me. So cronut invented by Dominique Ansel. Trevor Trevor used to work for him. Um, but when that happened, he was sending cease and desist to anyone calling anything a cronut. Wow. He couldn't stop people from layering croissant dough and frying it, but he could stop the usage of from the name. From calling it. So yeah. local donut shops, they took it upon themselves to you know they'd call it a dosant instead of a cronut. But I'll never forget SK's Donuts, mm -hmm. and I believe Hollywood, called it a scronut. And there is nothing more appetized to this gobbler than a scronut. And that's my official answer for best donut. He is donuts for nuts. They call me the scronut gobbler. <laughs> I'm going to gobble your scronuts. I'm nuts. Get as adventurous as you want in your kitchen with the Mythical Kitchen merch collection. We all need a little adventure in our lives, right? Right, Nicole? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Available now at mythical.com. What was that? My art. Okay. All right, Nicole. What the hell are these on my head? We've heard what you and I have to say. <laughs> now it's time to find out what other wacky opinions are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for the segment we call Opinions, opinions Are Like, like Donuts. Like Donuts. You're so cheeky. I'm a cheeky You're so little cheeky. You cheeky little monkey. My, you cheeky little minx. Well, Nicole, it's time. Do you know that a minx is an animal that you we can turn into a coat? We talked about this already. Do you know that your favorite segment and everybody's favorite segment is called Review or Review? I love this. It's the best yeah, part of my whole now, day. Now who's going nuts for <laughs> Review or Review? So yeah. what happens? People review us and we review them, influencing you to go review us on Apple Podcasts. It's um, a trick. We got the alliest five stars. It's very long, <clears throat> so I'm going to speed read it. 
Fun for the whole family, almost. Just a fabulous experience every week, spending time with Josh and Nicole, learning about the history of food, hearing amusement anecdotes, and the odd special guests is a must for my family, except for my ex-wife. We were so happy in the beginning, always laughing, spending quality time, then you came along. I thought your little program was irreverent and cute, but my wife didn't appreciate the prurient jokes and inane banter. She let it go for the most part because it was innocent enough until the discussion turned to the title of your podcast. She insisted that a hot dog was not a sandwich and would not hear any idea otherwise. It all came to a head when you declared that a hot dog was a sandwich and ultimately agreed with me. Besides bad grammar, people who put up Christmas lights before Thanksgiving and mangoes and everything, she despised me being right. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. She could live with Die Hard being a Christmas movie, and she accepted that we landed on the moon, but this was too far for her, I guess, because she divorced me the next day. My kids and I still love listening to you. Keep up the good work. No notes. I'm going to give that three stars. Overshare. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say I'll say four stars. Uh, pretty well written. Love the usage of the word prurient. I and Googled it. It means I voyeuristic. <laughs> love the love the fact that you still have a relationship with your kids. That's that's important. Um, yeah, proud of you for yeah, that. Yeah, ultimately, uh, don't trauma dump on us. We'll do the trauma dumping. We do it to you. That's our job. And that's the relationship that I like to have. <laughs> I'm kidding. Please trauma dump. Um, Use our Apple podcast review page as a diary of all the bad things that have ever happened in your life. I use my <laughs> Twitter that way. Fair enough. Let's get to that first opinion. Hi, this is Sunny from Kansas City. I wanted to share one of KC, my Mug, um, favorite comfort meals that I've had ever since childhood. Chili and cinnamon this rolls. This is day-old cold rice oh. with buttermilk and crushed up Pringles. <laughs> and I suspect that this has to do with what I used to eat when I was a very, very picky eater um, as a toddler when I went to India um, to see my grandparents for the first time, uh, which was essentially rice with like cultured yogurt and puppet. Love it. I um, wonder if she's talking about curry. If you were to I try it, it, I'd recommend using sour cream and onion Pringles. And I think it's a really great comfort food. Love the podcast. So funny. Thanks for doing what you do. Probably. Bye. Sunny's so funny. That's... So you say, what is it called? So I I don't know where, where y'all's family's from in India, but my best homie Deep, uh, his family's from Gujarat, and they would always eat uh, gadi, which is like a very thinned out cultured yogurt. Mm-hmm. It's not dissimilar from buttermilk at all. Lots of curry leaves in there. Really fantastic. They would always eat that with rice, and he would eat it cold as a snack all the time. And I remember going to his house after basketball practice or something and eating that. Yeah, when I was a kid, my mom used to make something called kate most. So kate is like a very like uh, dense rice where like you don't drain it so you know like an impersion rice Mm, you like drain it al dente and then you steam it yeah it was just rice cooked with water all the way through so it was like kind of like thick and like glutinous Mm, mm. and then some uh mountain high yogurt and salt and like that was like my food i would eat if like my stomach was bothering me or if i just like needed something to like eat yeah that was like my dish of choice there's one part of your comfort meal that's really, really beautiful, right? That you, these are like very American convenience butter foods, milk. Pringles, buttermilk. Yeah. And then there's like the other part of me that I always see stuff like that. And I'm like, I guess this is just an inevitable cultural shift and change, right? This is what happens within diaspora. And it's great that there's free movement of people so we can move wherever we want. Yeah. And there's a part of me that's like, man, are those cultural traditions just eventually going to die out to Pringles? You know what I mean? Die out. Die out, shift. I mean, shift. You look at um, die out. There's books. There's no sure. There's there's books, but I mean, we are inevitably losing a lot a lot of uh, significant cultural, especially foods. Right? Well, I mean, you think about like um, Hawaii, right? When people are like, oh, spam, such a Hawaiian thing. It's like no, that's I mean, that's a mainland America thing that was exported to Hawaii for the sure. same reasons that native foodways there have been being erased. They're not, yeah. you know, they exist simultaneously and because of each other. I don't I don't necessarily think like appropriation of food and foodstuffs to, for the Americanized palate is like the worst thing in the world. Oh, no, 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 no. And again, I don't it's think like it's a, a, bad it's a rad thing. comfort meal and, you know. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think you adjust flavors and textures and ingredients to your own preference. And that's the beauty of living in a... Living in America. <laughs> Living in the U.S. It's fun. No one's going to like judge. We'll judge you, but like you're not going to be judged yeah. or like seen as less than because of these food And a lot of dope, unique foods come out of that. Deep's mom used to yeah. throw a bunch of masala, different masalas in her lasagna and stuff when she would make it. Masala lasagna. Masala lasagna. Damn, Sounds girl. Good. Stuff's great. What up, guys? What up? Um, I'm currently holding a hydro flask full of some dozens amount of ounces 
uh, Crystal Light. I was going to say, uh, are you driving? I, I was going to say, are you driving? Is Crystal Light going to kill me? Because <laughs> I still have the palate of a nine-year-old and can't have raw water. Um, oh. Yeah, chemically, what's going on there? Uh, <laughs> can I survive? Am I being hydrated? Uh, yeah, you're experts. Thank you. Uh, so I never got into the crystal light game. I'm also not in the water talk game. I'm also not like, I've never been a Mio person. I've never been a sugar-free crush in my water. I drink water. I'm, I don't drink a lot of water, but I drink water. And, um, something about the crystal light ads, like we're always like a little bit weird and like, I don't know. Crystal light ads are very diet culture right? Yeah, it's very diet culture yeah, I, yeah. I never, we never got into that part of it. Thank God. Uh, but, um, I just... I just never liked it, and it was. I'd rather just eat Country Time Lemonade, the pink so, one. So what's interesting? Think about the volume here. Country Time Lemonade. You got to put, say, I'm just estimating here, but like two tablespoons of that for 16 ounces. Crystal Light. You're putting a half a teaspoon in for 16 ounces because Country Time Lemonade powder is sugar, right? I love Crystal Light. It. Where you're asking if you're gonna die. The reason you're asking if you're gonna die is because it ain't sugar. It's the fake stuff. Oh, it's, okay. Uh, I, I googled it to see exactly what sweeteners are using. I used to drink in up through college. I did it when I was a kid and I stopped drinking like I used to drink a half gallon of cranberry juice cocktail a day <laughs> when I was so a child because I was like fruit healthy. Did you have a You're UTI? It. No, and I never did because of that. Well, it had it once it, and it was non ST. Anyways, um, but I at some point when I was in high school transitioned to drinking Crystal Light because like you said, I don't like blah water. I want some flavors. I continued with that through college. I would keep like an empty milk gallon. I'd fill it with water, crush some crystal light packets in there, shake it up, and that was all of my hydration. Are you getting hydrated? Absolutely, right? Think about um, just the amount of water that you're drinking. There's no amount of aspartame and a sulfame potassium, also known as ACE-K. It's the sweetener that really revolutionized Coke Zero. No amount of that is going to take away the fact that you just drank a ton of water. You're doing good stuff for you. Are you going to die? Maybe. We need an We're all going to oh, die. Oh, well, Josh says it best. Say, we're, we're all, all going to eat. We all got to eat. And we're all, say it with me. Oh, well, yeah, but I don't know what you're going to say. You know what I'm going to say. Well, then we I say, we all got to eat, eat. And we're, we're all, all going to die. And it's true. Yeah. Um, And so you are hydrating yourself on your way to death. Will you die faster because of the aspartame is probably the question to ask. I don't know. My personal beliefs <laughs> say no. Um, And I think the scientific consensus is no we would need an actual doctor and or scientist to talk about this because we're neither yeah um and, and i think we do want to do that episode soon so keep an eye out for that um but from what i know there was one famous study in the 90s from the ramazzini foundation uh that linked aspartame to not they said cancer but it turns out it was just growths on lab rats but the amount of aspartame they were pumping into these ra lab rats intravenously, which is not the way that we consume aspartame, was the equivalent of 1,200 Diet Cokes a day. <gasps> and Poor so I babies. believe they officially had to recant. Look it up for yourself, Ramazzini's oh, study on aspartame. That's so But I believe sad. they had to straight up recant and, and, and unpublish the study. But it, it still sent shockwaves. So people associate aspartame with cancer. Um, there was a recent study that came out that linked it as like a potential signifier of something or other. Um I don't believe that's true. I also don't believe you can cheat God. And as like a probably atheist um, saying God is a weird thing, but you I You don't think, believe in God? No, nah, not really. I just kind of believe in vibes. You Omnipresent know I mean? source? Nah, not even a source. Just like we're here and that's good enough. <laughs> you know? Continue. Uh, but yeah, you can't cheat God. Like you can't uh, get blood from a stone. <laughs> something bad has to happen to you because you're enjoying all that sweetness with none of the caloric intake of sugar. Something We all reap what we sow. Something bad is coming. It's like in the 50s and they're like, smoking cigarettes, this is cool. Surely nothing can be bad. It was like, no, nah, you're going to, something's going to happen. So I also kind of believe that. I just don't know what the it is. But far as I know, all of the current scientific evidence points to this is just a safe thing to consume and you are definitely <laughs> hydrating in crystal light raspberry ice is Delish. I think you're gonna live forever. You're pickling your body in so much aspartame. You're gonna live to be 230. Yeah, you're basically mummifying yourself like a Imhotep. You're like a pharaoh from the inside out. Imhotep. Just Good be, reference. Just gonna be. Is that a the mummy dyed reference? Bright red. That's the mummy. That's the mummy. <laughs> Brendan Fraser mummy. Yeah. Rachel Vice. Ooh. Next big, opinion. Big Rachel Vice guy over here. Hi, this is Isabel. Um, 
my hot take. It's about when from I work. was a child, I would put sounds like her lima beans in strawberry yogurt. Oh, I get it. I have not done it since I was a child, so maybe I should try I that and see. If it actually why? does still taste good. I do not know but, why. You know, I, I probably had a very you know cool palate for an eight year old. I agree. I guess. Why do you know why? What do you okay. mean you know why? Lima beans, specifically the frozen ones that are no longer frozen have this very interesting texture. It's almost like, not ubalek, it's like two steps away from ubalek. It's almost like chewing on like foam. And it's like a very specific, like, um, has this very specific, like... But you're talking straight out of the freezer. You're not cooking them. You're popping them. No, no, no. They were in the freezer, but now they're not. So they're room temperature. Because my mom cooks with frozen lima, lima beans all the time. So when you isolate a lima bean... It has this very specific grain texture that's almost like solidified split pea soup. I know I'm getting very technical with this. But lima beans don't always, especially if they're frozen, have that funky texture like, say, a fava bean does. Sometimes mm. fava bean is very, like, aromatic and, like, whoosh, like very strong. Yeah. Lima bean is a little bit more tame. And if you mi- and it has this, like, velvety, ubalecky, split pea soupy, f- like, texture. Ooh. And if you pair it with strawberry yogurt, it cancels out the flavor of the lima bean. But it still is a little bit different, but it's more velvety than the yogurt. So I understand you. Where Isabel, wow. I get it. I understand you. I haven't done this, but I know what it tastes like in my head, and it sounds really good. I just want to advocate for more bean-based desserts. We need to eat more lima beans. Also more lima beans, more butter beans. I, I'm a big bean guy, and I think they're very versatile. When you go to the Heidi Lao hot pot, chain of hot pot spots in China come to the States recently, um, they yeah. have the whole bar with about 60 ingredients that you can make sauces from. But one of the big vats on that bar is just labeled dessert. And it is a very beans? thin soup with beans and jellies, and it's hot, and there's a whole lychee in there sometimes. And I like it. Have you heard about people that have lima bean allergies? Uh, no. My my brother in law with them. My brother in law has a really hard. I think it's either lima beans or fava beans. If he eats them, he'll die. It's like a gene mutation. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> uh, I, thanks so much for stopping by the <laughs> podcast. Uh, <laughs> hope Don't die, a, Mikey. I love you. Hope you had a good time. I've met Mikey. He has spiky hair. Mikey. I, That's why I call him Spiky Mikey. Spiky <laughs> Mikey. He's going to We got new that. audio only episodes every Wednesday. New video comes that. out every Sunday. That's it. If you want to be featured on Opinions or at Casseroles, hit us up at 833-DOG-POD1. We love to hear your voices, and we love to hear your opinions, and we love to hear your stories, and we love to hear your drama. I put this whole thing in my mouth. I know I can't. For do more it. Mythical Kitchen, I can do it too. Ah, check out Off our camera. other videos. Off camera. We launch new videos every week. <laughs> I'll go under the table. Yeah, together. me too. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it.